You've got your headphones on. I'll turn it on. So when it hears the noise, if I blow on it, you can see the red indicator light mm -hmm. telling us that there's a leak. And also we can hear the noise through the headphones. So you can stand at a distance of around about maybe a meter away. And if there's a good fair leak, you should be able to hear it and then home in on it. Right. And that's what I did, just a normal one of the male infusion leak detector kit. Everyone's use. got one in yeah, their cupboard much, at home. Everyone's got one in their cupboard at home, yeah, yeah. Including <laughs> me, funny enough. Yeah, so, and that's Brilliant. how we do it. And, um, Thank you. And also an indicator to see if we have got a leak is if we look at our vac gauge. So at the moment, we've just turned our vacuum off. So as you can see, the number's rising. So this is, our, this is how much air is within the vacuum bag. So this is an indicator. So we need to be under 50 to be able to shoot, which we are well under that. Um, and if, it, if we're struggling to get to that number, that tells us that somewhere on the bag there's a problem. With that and the leak detector, we've um, we've searched this bag through and sorted all the leaks out, and we've got a good leak rate, and and so far so good. Excellent. And, so uh, is this really a pleased. single bag over this the one, whole thing? One vacuum bag all over, yeah. Wow. So this is twenty-five yeah. meters by sixteen meter vacuum bag. So so you know it took a lot a lot of work to fit this, especially around the front end because it's because obviously with a cat around, it's a double hole going around. We had to very carefully cut the bag and manoeuvre it round, and if we made a mistake. That was it. We only had one shot because we only had one bag to do it with. So it was a risky, risky fitment, but we've managed to get it done. So that was, you know, it was really good. So these are the pieces that we saw popping off. Correct. So the, when you took the plug out. Yes. So basically we've had to do it in pieces because you've got ne negative release angles on the motor, which means it can't come out of one piece. So we've had to, we have to take this apart. So what happens is that front section comes out first. As you can see, it's a complete separate piece. Then the two sides of the holes then pop inwards. And then we've got, in another shed, we've got the two wings or outboards, as some people like to call them, that bolt to the sides to create the outer shape of the hull. That is quite impressive. So for the audience, Dan, what are we actually looking at here? So what you're looking at there, so obviously the blue is the vacuum bag that's, that's completely in, over the entire bag. We've got the black stuff running around the edge, which is called bag tape, and that's what we seal the bag to the motor. We've got a blue rope that runs around the entire outside of the job, which is what we connect our vacuum to. So what that acts is, it, that gives us a vacuum ring around the entire job. Then when you look in the job, you can see the green, what we call, it's called shrouded spiral. So it's basically, it's a spiral wrap of plastic with mesh around it. And that's where we pump our resin into the job and it, the resin will travel along this pipe and then spread into the job. So as you can see there, we've punched, we've punched our pipe through a castle onto the spiral. All these pipes then feed all the way back to the rear manifold and that manifold is connected to our infusion pump which pumps the resin into the job. And what we've also got, where we've got high uh, material buildup, is we've got vacuums on the high build up areas which what that does then is that pulls the resin to those areas for us to ensure that the high build up material gets wet out correctly with the resin and what we've also put on there to help it is a resin flow mesh so this mesh creates a gap between the vacuum and the material to allow the resin to also flow through that so it just makes it it takes away the hardship of the resin getting to the areas it makes it easy to get to there because one thing with high build up areas it takes a lot of time and resin to infuse those areas so we need to get the resin there as quickly as possible to give it as much time as possible to wet through the thickness of the material. Infusion happens tomorrow. Do yeah. you have an estimated how long you think that it might take to do this whole... So at the moment, I, I suspect I'm, it's going to take around three hours. That's I'm pretty gonna, quick. Yeah, I'm going to try and slow it down as much as I can because the one thing with infusion is you don't want to infuse too quickly. You need to give the resin time to soak through the material, especially when you consider some of our core mm. material is 50 mil thick. So the longer the better. So I'm not going to rush, but the job will shoot as quick as it wants to shoot. So all of our core will have these resin travel lines in. So what happens with the material on top, the resin can flow through these joints which helps it spread across the job. Okay. So what you sometimes you get material where you don't have the resin travel lines in and it'll be like that with just the holes in. Mm -hmm. And then that's where we have to cover the job in this flow mesh. Okay. Um, but because we've got the resin travel lines, we don't need to put flow mesh over the entire job and this will help the job shoot. So this is why I suspect the job 
will take around three hours because the resin will flow through this pretty quick. And that's why we've had to do what we've done with the vacuum to make sure that we pull the resin to the high build up areas and not mm -hmm. just shoot straight across the core material. All right. So we're gonna leave the bag now on vacuum overnight to, so, to tell us that if, so if we come in the morning, the bags, there's no issues, then we know the bag's secure and safe to shoot. Right. So we're at the moment, we're just going through, ticking all the boxes, checking everything, really going over it, giving it a fine, real good check to make sure that nothing's gonna go wrong with us tonight. So when we come in tomorrow, we can just literally turn everything on and shoot the dog. Amazing, right. brilliant. Boys. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. So we haven't reached the edge at the front yet. Can you turn off E forward top, please? Yeah. And do, do, the, do the same on the other side. I think it's... 